Oh, hello, there you are, vlog. What? This is a fancy camera for the vlog channel. This doesn't usually happen this way. Okay, so I've been using the ZenBook S13 OLED for the last week and a half. Pretty much for everything, it's replaced all of the different computers that I've been using. So I'm gonna go as in-depth as I can on that week and a half and give my personal verdict. I am a little bit biased, but I do wanna share my genuine experiences, what I think this is for, what I think this is not for, and kind of just put it all in here. This is the full version of a much more condensed version that will be on the main channel in a video coming out later this week. I got a new laptop. So this was provided to me by Asus. This is not only provided to me, but I am sponsored by Asus and have been for four years. So while this is a, an in-depth sort of personal review and my experience and all the stuff, look, I'm biased. I love Asus, I work with them. So take with that as you will. I think I've blabbed enough. Let's open this box up. This is a unique laptop in many ways, but one of the ways is that it's actually manufactured with some recycled materials and all of the packaging is recycled packaging and cardboard or, or biodegradable, which I guess is sort of emphasizing Asus's sort of move. Really embrace sustainability, which I think is really cool. Ooh. This is the ZenBook S13 OLED. It is very, very thin. Less than one centimeter in thickness, less than one kilo in weight. A 2.8K display, I was wondering, so I knew it wouldn't be 4K because it's small, but it, I hoped it wouldn't be 1080p. So that's good that we've got some somewhere in the middle. This case cover, this laptop cover is made of recycled materials. I think that's really cool. It's actually made of uh, ocean material, so ocean plastics. I think that's really cool. Very small power unit. This is such a change from my usual, like my usual laptop I take with me in this. And this is my iPad Pro. It's smaller than an iPad Pro. That means it'll fit in my smaller bag. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, that made that way more portable and usable for me day to day. That's really cool. And it's powered by USB-C. If you have a charging brick that you want to take with you, this will in fact charge from a charging brick. Bloop. Here you go. It's charging. That's cool. Yeah, apparently you can use this as a stand if you want. Oh, that's actually pretty decent. There you go, raised stand. I am gonna take this home and I'm gonna switch to using this as my daily driver. And this will be the first time I have a device I take between home and work and meetings. At the moment, I have a device I use at home, I have a laptop I use at work. Sometimes I drag that around to meetings, but it's a bit bulky and I don't take it to all meetings because it's a bit bigger for that. And the battery isn't as reliable as something that hopefully will last much longer. So let's see if this is a vast improvement. Let's go! It's still a vlog, so it's gonna be low, you know, like, just watch. Before we dive into my personal experience with this device, let me start off with a few of the specs. Using a 13th gen i7 core processor and an Iris XE graphics card, up to 32 gigs of DDR5 memory, one terabyte hard drive, and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. A large ErgoSense touchpad, 2.8K OLED display, which is absolutely gorgeous. Decent amount of IO ports with two full Thunderbolts, a full-size HDMI, an audio jack, and a Type A 3.2 port. You're going to have some compromises because, well, it's as much about what you don't have that enables you to have such a thin and light and very small portable laptop. But in my opinion, these compromises were made in a really balanced way. Now, there's very little that this laptop can't do. You might think it would be playing AAA games, but actually more on that later, because even that surprised me. But a laptop like this is made to move. It's made to go with you and work with you in as many circumstances and situations as possible, which is what I tried to put it through in the last couple of weeks. All right, it's a big first day. This is my main workstation area, like when I'm at home. This is the Pro Duo. I'm gonna miss the dual screen, because, especially when I was like learning to code and things like that, to have like the videos on the bottom screen and then all the working area in the top screen, you know, is the sacrifice worth it for all the movability of the S13 OLED? We'll find out. So welcome to my day-to-day -day office setup. So this is at work. I have a Zephyrus Duo, which is basically the gaming version of the ZenBook Pro Duo. 
obviously them being more robust machines, I have just had one at home and had one here. And that's how it functioned. However, it does mean that different tabs and different sort of work in progress stuff are open on different machines. So I'm gonna be trialing and workshopping using one device between home and here. In theory, I just plug in this USB-C to a laptop dock and it plugs in this monitor and whatever peripherals and stuff. And then in theory, I could just take this laptop out to meetings. This is a heavy laptop though, and not as long battery life as I'd like it to be. Can't really get through a lot of meetings without needing a power cable. So, this is my first time doing it with this one. Pop it in the same home, plug it in the same plug. Oh, look at that, it just read my eyes and we're logged in. Is that charging as well? It is, it's charging as well. Okay, so I'm pretty much good to go, that's it. The USB plug wasn't quite enough to charge the, the, uh, the Zephyr S. And also for some reason it didn't seem to work with the webcam plugged in, but I feel like this all just will work with the one plug, which is pretty nice. Anyways, let's give it a crack. Again, I'm workshopping this whole new structure of just working home and office from one device. And we'll see how that goes. There's all these different function buttons as most laptops have, obviously. There's one I've never actually used, which is a casting one. And I always have trouble casting to this TV thing. Like, not always, like half the time it disconnects and stuff, which is fine. Boop. Allow. Okay, all right, that was fairly painless. Let's see if I can do that nice and quick. What's the quickest way to do that? Boop. I don't really move the larger, though powerful laptops with me as often as I might like to because that point of resistance when it comes to the weight and the size. The two screens is awesome. The extremely high performance is fantastic, especially if you're editing while traveling, especially as complex as some of our edits here get, but I didn't take it with me everywhere. I didn't just pick it up and bring it to a meeting very often, which is often where I would find I would want to, which is why I've actually really acclimatized to working with this much more. First of all, my personal editing workload is much less these days. I do check in and do some edits, and this is fine for a lot of the basic editing that I need to do day to day. But when it comes to running my life, that's where this has been a huge improvement. Look, if you can pick up a laptop with two fingers, I think that definitely vouches for its lightness. If it's as easy to pick this up and take to a meeting as an iPad Pro is, then you're winning. But the only hesitation I would normally have is that it might feel breakable. And that's actually where one of these features, to me, really sings, and that is that it is military grade construction, meaning it's designed up to a certain threshold of durability that guarantees it can take heavy wear and tear. It's been drop tested, it's been pressure tested, heat and cold tested in all of the parameters that would earn that rating, which is a really noteworthy thing because again, very light, very portable, not flimsy. And I have felt that. Honestly, actually, one of the biggest ways I've felt that is when I'm typing or resting my hand on the front of the laptop, it feels solid. I don't feel like I'm bending anything or about to break it. And I'm a heavy handed sort of guy. It's beautifully designed. I genuinely love that laptop cover, which, side note, is actually designed and made out of recycled materials. And that's one of the other major selling points of this laptop. The drive towards sustainability. The military grade durability, of course, means it's gonna be around and used a lot longer. 100% of the packaging is recyclable and compostable. And ASUS is very vocal about their responsible manufacture. With a commitment to carbon neutrality, this laptop is a pioneer in their lineup of devices that's showing what they can do to push at the limits of what can be done with technology while also pulling back in a way that needs to be done to create a sustainable future. With a focus on eco-friendly materials, eco-conscious packaging and power efficiency. When it comes to battery life, the sticker says 14 plus hours of battery life. I have never found uh, any sticker advertising battery life that's been true to my experience, but my experience with this device has been that I've never found myself falling short. So I would say a reliable seven to eight hours of decent, like fairly constant use is what my experience has been with this laptop. And with most laptops I've ever used, it's generally half that or less. So I found that really pulls that slight dread away from the back of your mind when you think, oh, where's the charger, where's the charger? And the fact that this does charge with USB-C means you can plug it into the same socket you plug your phone into and usually everyone has a phone charger just around the corner. Oh, and of course, then that means this powers off of a battery bank. 
like your phone. So that's a huge bonus. I have actually recharged this to 100% off a battery bank and that took me by surprise. <laughs> of every device I've ever used in my life, this has removed power consumption from my mind the most, which is pretty awesome, especially again, as I've mentioned, when it comes to carrying the device around with you. Then we have a few of some of the more outlying features that I hadn't known much about, but actually have experienced really positively. One of them is their Wi-Fi Master Premium Certification. Now, what this means, I'm not sure. There's four things listed here. Wi-Fi 6E 802.11ax is a, is a thing. Wi-Fi stabilizer support, Wi-Fi Smart Connect, Wi-Fi Task First support. I honestly usually don't notice the difference, except that I had a point of comparison. Every laptop we've ever tried to connect to the TV that we usually cast our meetings on from our laptops nearly always drops out or struggles to connect. This has been 100% reliable, and that sort of thing you notice. I, if anything, have been quite pleasantly surprised by how very reliable this has connected over a network when I want it to. It boasts immersive audio. Again, I'm gonna be a little blunt here and say I don't go to a laptop for immersive audio, especially with the standards that we have in terms of production, we usually go to monitoring headphones. However, I'll say I haven't been disappointed. It's done everything I need it to, which is good. You, it's one of those things that you know when it's not good enough, and this is definitely good enough. It does have a great ErgoSense touchpad. Again, one of those things that I tend to not use as much as a mouse, especially because I'm highly efficiency driven. But it does feel great when I need to use it. And another thing I've noticed is when I put a bit of pressure on it, it's not screaming at me. There have been plenty of times with different laptops where putting under a bit of strain has the fans kicking in kind of by default and it can be quite voluminous, especially because a lot of those laptops are, are very cooling centric. Now, while this much smaller laptop won't obviously try and tackle the same tasks that a full-fledged production or editing laptop will tackle, at the same time, whenever I've given it more work, I haven't been told off by the laptop about it. It hasn't become sluggish or capped itself and it hasn't started going <laughs> It's been really tastefully quiet and delightful to use. I'm gonna finish off talking about the, some of the stuff I figured it wouldn't be built for, but I had to give it a go anyway. Starting off with gaming. You wouldn't get this to be a gaming laptop. However, with Diablo 4 launching this week, I couldn't resist trying. And to my delight, it actually worked. Now, caveat, at first it didn't feel like it was because I was launching at the 2.8K display resolution and it was begging for me to stop. It opened stuff, but it was chugging. However, when I jumped out of the game, downscaled to 1080p and jumped back in the game, I ran it on medium to high settings pretty comfortably. I'm gonna say it was like at the at or occasionally under the 30 frames per second. So if you're like a gaming junkie, again, you wouldn't be getting this laptop for gaming, obviously. However, if you're like myself and you find yourself traveling, you actually can game on this laptop. Not only can you game, you can AAA game on this laptop with medium to low settings or uh, a 1080p resolution. Now I think they're pretty decent compromises to have something like this that actually can run graphics intensive software. So aside from it handling the essentials, video editing software, post-production and processing, the fact that it can also handle some decent-ish gaming is really surprising and very cool. That's one of those things where when I read the, uh, the Iris XE graphics, I'm slightly underwhelmed because I don't know what that means. Everyone knows what the NVIDIA this or that is or what the latest threshold graphics cards are. And when you don't sort of see one of those titles in a graphics spec read out of a laptop, you sort of think, okay, not for gaming. So I thought that was really cool. And then I got cheeky and thought, oh, I wonder if I can run virtual reality. So I ran this Steam VR checker and it can't. Okay, I knew I was being cheeky with that one. No surprises there. Again, you're not getting this laptop for virtual reality. However, I really do feel like I tried everything with this device. And the fact that I got more than I bargained for is pretty cool. But more than anything, and actually the essential stuff is the actual kind of change of workflow and life this has given me to be able to just have this with me everywhere. I now take my laptop with me to and from work. This has uh, frankly replaced those two high power, high performance laptops, one that I kept at home, one that I have at work, 
We can now use them elsewhere in the studio. Don't get me wrong, they're very powerful and useful laptops. But my life benefits from the versatility and flexibility of being able to just wisp away into a small bag or pocket and know that I can pick up where I left off, exactly where I left off. And the quality of life improvement of being able to open up the laptop, no matter where I am, having all the same browser tabs and having all the same emails open and having all the same programs halfway through their creation, Oh, it's amazing. I used to have to always try and recalibrate and pick up somewhere I left off somewhere else. Now I don't have to because it's always here with me. And that is really cool. So a huge thank you to Asus for providing me with this beautiful laptop. Of course, this video is sponsored. I hope this has been, you know, this has just logged me in by scanning my face. I love that. The only thing missing is, good morning, Mr. Brooks. Would you like me to give you a massage? Maybe don't do that feature yet though. Anyway, huge thank you to ASUS for taking me to the launch event, providing me with a ZenBook S13 OLED, and being an awesome supporter of all things Jazza. I am just so proud and delighted to have been working for ASUS for over four years now. They're genuinely a brilliant company with really high standards, and their vision of searching for incredible really speaks to what I do as a creative person. I always want to do cool stuff and they always do cool stuff and I, I love that I get to do cool stuff with them. So thank you for watching this fairly extensive review but I thought it was a bit helpful and blunt and fun. Jazz it out. No. Links in the, in the description.